We are so lucky as gardeners to have something to do when the weather's as grim as it is at the moment. I can't even get to my plot. It's basically surrounded by water on every side and the, the green drive that you use to access it is just like marshland and the path that runs into my plot is absolutely, you know, it's four inches deep in water. So yesterday when I went to the plot, uh, I kind of waded through and got totally soaking wet, but then I just put stepping stones in so that I could get to the plot. But this video isn't about the weather, it's about my seedling process and I thought it would be really nice to uh, just sort of check in just a little bit beyond the middle of January just to see how the seedlings are going and just also just to talk a little bit about my approach to seed sowing in January. My focus is not to get early tomatoes and early peppers and giant onions and all of that sort of thing. My objective is to get a really stable, continuous harvest through the year. And that means my focus really right now is not on particularly early summer veg, it's on maximising the harvest through the sort of period April through to early June, the so-called Hungry Gap. And so I've been doing a lot of planting for the Hungry Gap and I've done that in other videos, but I'm also doing a lot of sowing for the Hungry Gap as well right now. And so anyway, that's my approach. And so if you want to sort of focus in on the earliest possible summer crops, then I would really recommend, you know, you follow perhaps some other gardening channels as well, where that is their focus. That's not my focus. And also the issue that I've got is that I grow quite a large number of tomatoes and peppers. I think I'm this year I'm growing 48 sweet peppers um, and probably about 24 tomatoes, um, cordon tomatoes, uh, as well as loads of tomatoes outside. Um, and that takes up a lot of space. And so I have to be really careful about how I do my space management because peppers in particular they, you know, you don't have to just keep those above freezing. You really have to keep them above about 10 degrees centigrade. And that's the same with cucumbers as well. And, you know, keeping a, a large space above 10 degrees centigrade, you know, costs a lot of money. Um, so, you know, I'm quite careful to make sure that I can keep all of those plants healthy on the windowsills inside and in the conservatory. And that I've still got plenty of space for all the other things that I need to grow. So for me, it's about staging my harvests. So for example, with peppers, um, I'm only doing a quarter of my peppers right now, uh, or you know, in January, and then I'll do another quarter in early February, and then I'll do the other half um, towards the end of February or early March, because I don't need all of my peppers to come to harvest at the same time. You know, I'm quite happy for a quarter of them to come early, then the second quarter to come, you know, um, a month later, two or three weeks later probably, and then the main crop to come maybe a week uh, after those. And uh, that's a nice sort of gradual introduction. We don't need our main crop peppers, which are the ones that we're mainly using to make preserves, you know, chilies and um, so ketchups and passatas and you know sauces and drying and freezing and all of that. I don't need those early. I, you know, I can do the drying and the freezing and the preserving uh, at any time during the summer. So that's enough waffling. Let's take a look at the progress. So as people are probably fed up of hearing about now, I've written a little book. Uh, I'm in the process of writing it, but there's a lot of content in here already. And you can get a link to access uh, this chapter which is all about the basics and sewing. And so this basically takes you through my whole kind of approach to sowing seeds. So there's plenty of video content, talk about the compost that I use, potting compost that I use, how I actually do the sewing, all the equipment that I use, my seed sewing database, which is freely available, um, all the stuff, pens, labels, all the containers that I use, where I, get to, where I get them from, all that sort of thing, all the way up to the big pots, watering, grow lights, 
testing, timings, soaking seeds, chitting seeds, etc, etc. There's loads and loads of stuff in here. And all my recommendations for multi-sowing for the seasons. So how many to multi-sow in spring and summer, how many in autumn and winter, and kind of special notes for that. Direct sowing seeds, as I said, watering and all the associated videos. So if you really want to see me sowing, lots of different videos that I've done that uh, feature sowing. Okay, so we're in my conservatory stroke warm growing room at the moment. There's two sets of grow lights in here because this room at this time of year it only gets a few hours of sun. And obviously right now there's no sun at all. So we do need some grow lights, but it has the advantage that this is a living space. And so it's kept reasonably warm, certainly warm enough for the peppers and tomatoes that will be in here soon and more than warm enough for the lettuces and things that are in here right now and the brassicas and things. So let's take a look. So I've got some lovely little lettuces that I pricked out yesterday. They've all perked up nicely. We've got Lorini, Bijou, Grenoble Red and Smile at the end there. And then again, I also pricked out these peppers and this tray are all the chili peppers. And again, they've all perked up nicely. Um, I have planted some of the, you know, generally the recommendation seems to be not to plant your peppers deep, um, but I kind of ignore it when the peppers are this young. Um, so they're all looking nice and stocky now. Although they did look a little bit leggy before. And then this is the first batch of my sweet peppers. And I only need six of these from each tray for my early planting. Uh, but I've done nine cell trays. These will need to be potted on, so I'll probably only pot six of these on. Um, and these will also need to be potted on. Now the later peppers that I sow won't be potted on. They'll just stay in a six cell tray uh, until they're planted. And that's one of the reasons why I do some of them later, because it means I can avoid potting them on, which means I can keep them much more densely packed under the grow lights. Now, eventually these will actually go up on my grow shelf. And let's take a quick look at that. So the shelf is full at the moment. There's some Broad beans being grown for spares, lots of different brassicas and some peas being grown for shoots. Uh, but this is a fantastic space up here for peppers. And it gets loads of light, it's high up so it gets, it's nice and warm. And it means that as they're growing on, I don't need grow light space for them. And then down at the bottom here, We've got more lettuces, we've got some more Grenoble Red, some Canasta and some Luini. That's the tray that I pricked them out from. I've still got to prick these out. These are spinach beet. This isn't a great time to be sowing spinach beet um, because it will run to seed in spring. But uh, if you just accept that you're going to lose the crop, um, you know, sort of May time, then you can get a decent harvest between now and then. And then I've just started here, my early kales. And this is about as early as you can start kales, otherwise they will go to seed again in spring. What I've found is that these won't go to seed until late summer probably, so they do go to seed early, uh, but not all of the plants will do that. But it's, that doesn't matter because, you know, I'll have had a massive harvest off them. And what matters to me is that I've got lots of kale in April, May and June when I otherwise wouldn't have it. Um, so again, it's just part of my hunger gap strategy. And I've also just sown a few spare uh, onions, Red Baron and Paris Silver Skin there. They're just coming through now. I don't normally do that. I just had two spots spare here. So I thought, and I've got loads of seeds, so I thought I'll just sprinkle a few in there just to fill the tray up. I much prefer just to sow them 
direct into the modules. So yeah, so these are my favourite kales. Black Magic, which is a Tuscan kale. Dazzling Blue, which is a kind of cross between a Tuscan kale and a cabbage. It's really quite an amazing plant. And uh, just a standard Carvalho Nero Tuscan kale. So all the Tus Tuscans. I don't really recommend the curly kales at this time of year. They're better in March. And a maize, which is another nice little hearting lettuce. Some more brassicas, those are calabrese. And let's look at potatoes. So this is my second batch of Swift. And I did a video on planting these um, a couple of weeks ago. And these are actually sown only a week ago, actually, on the 14th and they're just breaking through. So today's the 20th, so they've been six days um, until they broke through. So that's really great. And these are the ones that I potted on uh, on that same day. So these are now two weeks old. And so they're growing really great. And just kind of keep them in the conservatory until I run out of space. So right now, they get actually quite a lot of light from this grow light and obviously quite a lot of natural light because they're in the conservatory. And then these are my early baking potatoes. Now again, I wouldn't really recommend doing early baking potatoes this early in the year. Um, but I'm just pushing the boundaries as I'm always doing. My recommendation is you start them at the beginning of March and I'll be doing a video all about that. But having these early ones allows me to show you the whole process um, because you know I'm running a couple of months ahead of, uh, of my recommended dates. And I'm kind of using grow lights to uh, cope with the fact that I'm running so early in the year. Uh, as I said, it just lets me demonstrate the process. I've got another potato there. So these potatoes will soon be heading to the polytunnel where they'll live out their lives. So I'm now in my cool growing room, which is in the workshop. And there's no heat here. There's no heat mats. There's only the heat from the grow lights. And that is not a lot. And hence I've got this plastic cover that goes on, although I give it extra ventilation by sticking that little wooden block in there. So these are growing very cool. I actually put a little um, temperature chart up so you can see what I mean by very cool. I'm just using this little sensor push Bluetooth thermometer to track the temperature in here. And But these are my early peas. So these are Oregon sugar pod and these are a sugar snap. And interestingly, the germination on the sugar snaps is not particularly good, but maybe in time they, should, they will all come through. I'm going to be planting these out sometime in February under a low tunnel. Uh, I should be harvesting them in May. And I find they do really well growing like that. And then these are my first two trays of onions. This one's Red Baron. This one is Paris Silver Skin. So these are multi sown direct into the modules. There's between three and four seeds in each module. Um, but I'm not really careful. I just pinch a few and drop them in because I actually want variation here. I actually want some to have four and some to have two. And I don't even mind if some have one. And that gives me a, a range of different sort of maturity speeds. So the ones that have got only one or two seeds in the module, they grow quicker. So they'll be harvested earlier. Uh, and it, again, it just gives me a sort of continuous harvest with no effort. Um, and it also gives me a mix of large and small onions. And that's what I want because I'll use the small ones for pickling and the big ones, bigger ones, medium sized ones, probably for storage. Uh, and the big ones we'll probably use uh, straight away. Might even chop those up and put them in the freezer. 
Um, and I've got lots more onions to come. So this is just the first first few. I plant my onions incredibly densely. Uh, I also don't pot them on. So they'll stay in these trays um, until they're planted. And I plant my onions in April. And I just put a little bit of fleece over them just to protect them for the first month or so. Um, and that works, seems to work fine for me. And because I grow so many onions, I really don't want the effort of potting them on or messing around with them. I like the fact that I can just you know, pinch a few in a, into a module and then just leave them for a few months. So lots of people ask me where I get my, these, these covers from and these trays and all the inserts and everything. I get everything from Wilco. It's really cheap, reasonable quality. It's good enough for me. So here's the rest of my early onions. And I'll do another batch in February. So these are Zabrun and they're an onion, but they taste a bit more and look a bit more like a shallot. Uh, Elsa Craig, Bedfordshire Champion and Semaine. These are a salad type onion. And these are not up yet. These were only planted seven days ago. I normally bank on my onions coming up after about 10 days. So we will see. And now if you want any more information about any of the varieties that you've seen, then I do recommend that you take a look at the link in the description to my sewing database for January. And this has got all the information about all the varieties, when I sewed them, how I sewed them, how long they were under lights for, or how long they will be under lights for, when I'm expecting to harvest them, loads and loads of really useful information. And uh, if you tap on the entry, then you get all the details uh, available as well. So I find this really useful myself. I have it on my phone, so it's always with me and I can easily update it with progress information and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, it's available on the web. And if you look in the frequently asked questions document that's linked in the description of this video, then you'll find out uh, how to get a copy of this database if you want to use it for yourself. And it's also fully customizable. Uh, so you can make it your own. So I've also done a little chapter about growing with lights and a similar sort of thing. All the basics about growing with lights, germination, the cool grow room, the warm grow room, hardening off, peppers, tomatoes, and other special things, and then all the related uh, videos that I've done about growing with lights. And this chapter is not that comprehensive yet, but as with everything in this ebook, everything is improving all the time. And ask lots of questions because at the moment, my favoured way to answer the questions is to film a video and add it to the ebook or to answer it directly in the text of the ebook. So I normally sign off with, my name's Steve, this is the Seaside Allotment Channel. Um, but I've changed the name. So now it's, my name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen, Garden and Allotment Channel. And the reason I've changed the name is because we're doing a lot, putting a lot more focus into gardening at home uh, now. And that was kind of triggered by all sorts of reasons, but partly by COVID, partly by allotment uh, policies, uh, partly by just trying to make things easier for ourselves. And so with, you know, it's much more focus on that garden, but also more focus on the ornamental kitchen garden side of it. So not just having a productive garden, but having an ornamental garden that is productive as well. And something that's easy to use, that looks nice all year round, that's easy to maintain, that doesn't need a lot of financial investment, all of those sorts of things. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of people seem to be uh, relating to that as much as they're relating to the allotment related content. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the new focus. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen, 
garden and allotment channel and I'll get that a bit slicker over the videos to come. Cheerio.